Hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. I am representing an organization called the Canadian Coalition for the Rights of Children. And our organization is all about recognizing uh, and promoting the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and monitoring it. And as Cindy kindly pointed out, it's about international law for children, recognizing that children have human rights, that children have a right to education, that children have a right to a whole host of things, including play and to express your views and to have those views taken seriously and um, a whole host of other things. Because when we're talking about education and the idea of education, we're not just talking about the idea that it'd be nice to have a school. It's the idea that it's the child's right to have an education and we have to do all to we can to recognize that. And so the coalition um, has a, a series of awards that it uh, calls the Child Rights Awards. And specifically, um, the, the, there's one award that um, Shannon has won this year. And it's called the Article 12 Award. And what Article 12 is a specific provision in the convention that talks about the right to express your views and have them given due weight. And um, Shannon is an incredible inspiration for all of us in terms of um, her, her incredible action on behalf of the children of Attawapiskat, but also other reserves and children generally. Um, and she received um, three nominations for this award. She, is, um, she, ha she has done so much for all of us. And so the article, I think it's really important to, to recognize Shannon um, for, she, for her work on education, but also her work on all child rights and all that she did, and supporting uh, and inspiring the rest of young people to act on, 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 uh, on in, in support of their rights. And so I have this award to present to uh, Shannon, and I will be presenting it to her parents. And could uh, Shannon's brothers and sisters also go join the group up there for the... This is an award for the family and their great recognition. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we get them and Andrew, can I invite you up to share a few words on behalf of your family? I think Serene was going to. What you? That means hello in their <laughs> language. Um, we are very honored to have accept our late daughter's. Uh, award for her um, hard working during her last, um, um, you know, months of her life. Um, she worked really hard, you know, for a better school. And she was so thrilled when she heard that she was and the other students of Ottawa Biscuit were getting a new school. But we haven't to see that yet that's still up in the air. So that's why we're here, you know, helping our late daughter's legacy. First of all, I want to thank the Elgin Street Public School for inviting us to your beautiful building, uh, here to your community. It's an honor to be here to accept the award on behalf of our daughter. I just want to focus my attention to the young people here uh, in this building. Shannon was no different. Our daughter had a dream of having a better education. And with the conditions back home, that was hard for her. But she persevered. She stayed strong. But she knew in her heart that this was not right. Having to put on your coats just to go to gym class. Having to put on your coats just to go to computer class. You have a beautiful building here. I, you know, I go back to um, last year when she first went to. Uh, a school, a real school as she called it, because first time in her life she didn't have to go outside.
to go to, to go to another class. And I was told she had tears because it got very emotional for her. And that was their first experience of having, having not forced to go outside just to go to another class. You know, and that's something maybe for you it's, you know, it's very hard to, to try and picture that. But it is happening in our home and other communities across this country. It is happening. There are students like you who are going through that experience. And it, it, ha it hinders your, your dreams because it's just difficult to endure that. And you, you're gonna hear some of our youth, which I'm very proud of, to be here. We have some representatives from our community, young people like you, who's gonna be speaking about their communities, about the conditions of the experience that they have to endure every day back home. And I want to thank you again for inviting us to your school. Thank you. Mingues. Hi. <laughs> um, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who helped support my late sister's dream. and. Let's hope to fulfill her dream and make it into a reality. Um, like my father said here, you guys do have a really, really lovely school. Like, I have grew up in portables myself. For the first years, I only had, I only been in the real school for only a few years till they closed it down for contamination. And from there on, I grew up in the portables, then I, then I came back to a real school once I moved with my sister to Nilisker to, to attend high school. And Shannon, Shannon really noticed the big difference when we moved into Nilisker. She noticed, the, the, especially the schools, like she noticed the major difference of it. And that's what she wanted to fight for, for our people. Cause she, she told me one time that uh, she thought me, me and her were the luckiest ones to be at least in a real school, but she also thought about the people and all the little kids back home. And that, this is why she's, she was trying to fight for a school for such a long time now. And once again, I would like to thank you all for all, your, all of your support and <laughs> stop. <laughs> okay, thank you.